Hello everyone and welcome to Bombless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about a very common occurrence that we will always encounter in our clinical practice that is called as pericoronitis. Basically, pericoronitis is the inflammation of the gum which is present over the impacted tooth. So in this video, we'll talk about everything that you have to know starting from with identifying up till the management of patients who are suffering from pericoronitis. So let's get started. Now, in this clinical picture, you can see that the, we have a tooth over here and there is inflammation of the gum which is present over this tooth. This is called as operculum and in cases where the tooth is impacted, so it basically traumatizes this area. So this area operculum gets inflamed over the incompletely erupted tooth and that leads to inflammation of this operculum. So this is the basic concept of pericoronitis. It's the inflammation of the operculum or you can say the gum tissue which is present over the impacted tooth mostly third molars and this inflammation then leads to infection swelling and even fever as well so this is called as pericoronitis now pericoronitis mainly and in major cases affects the lower third molar which is impacted in most of the cases now there are different phases of um, pericoronitis it can be either acute subacute and chronic now Chronic condition basically occurs when there has been multiple episodes of pericoronitis and the patient has not gotten any treatment done now. Chronic cases are usually mild, like as you can appreciate in this clinical picture, just some erythema is present over here and some little bleeding is also present over here now. When we talk about acute pericoronitis, basically it's in most of the cases, it's the first episode that the patient experiences and the first episode actually leads to acute pericoronitis in which patient experiences systematic um, complication which you can appreciate as fever, pain and swelling. Swelling you can appreciate of this operculum over here. Now let's talk about some important clinical features which you have to know in order to diagnose whether a patient is suffering from pericoronitis or not. Now most of the cases of pericoronitis are associated with the partially or you can say impacted lower mandibular third molar so this is the most common site of pericoronitis now how does the pericoronitis develop basically as you can appreciate that this is the gum tissue and this is the impacted tooth which, which is present over here so between there is a space between the operculum and the impacted tooth there is some space over here now in this space basically food particles, food debris, bacteria, plaque, everything starts to accumulate over here. So when this accumulation starts, it basically irritates this tissue, which then leads to inflammatory process. And when inflammatory process occurs over here, that leads to exudation and everything. And that basically causes inflammation of this operculum, which leads to pericoronitis. Now, this accumulation of bacteria and food is the main cause which leads to pericoronitis. Therefore, when we are treating the patient, this area between the impacted tooth and the gum, this space has to be cleaned in order to relieve the immediate symptoms of the patient now. At times, there may be not any clinical signs, but mild inflammation is still present over here, which can be clinically appreciated as redness. Now, acute episode when they are impacted tooth can arise at any time. So there is no specific time period or any duration till which the acute symptoms will stay or occur, but it can occur at any time. Now, as I've talked before, there is inflammatory process going on over here. So there are many inflammatory mediators present over here, which basically leads to exudation and that exudation then causes pericoronitis. Now, mainly when patient experiences swelling over here, so then those swellings are also present in the facial spaces and since this space enlarges, so when the patient tries to close their mouth, the maxillary third molar or even second molar, it hits on this area over here. And then that leads to further traumatizing the already inflamed tissue. And then the patient experiences difficulty in closing their mouth. Furthermore, if you talk about the clinical features of pericoronitis, the flap which you can see which is present over here, this is the pericoronitis inflamed operculum. So basically it contacts with the opposing jaw as I have talked before like maxillary third molar when the patient closes their mouth it hits this area and that leads to further pain and swelling. 
the clinical picture of pericoronitis basically as you can appreciate in this clinical picture we can appreciate some redness swollen structures and even suppurative as well as you can see there's pus accumulation over here that is an important feature and the pain which the patient experiences mainly it radiates to the jaw ear head and sometimes neck as well so that pain is really severe for the patient that's why they seek immediate treatment other than that sometimes patient experience foul taste in their mouth mainly because of the pus accumulation and the pus which drains sometimes away so patient mainly experiences the complaints that they are suffering from some bad taste in the mouth and that bad taste lead to bad odor as well now sometimes swelling and in most of the cases as you can say that swelling can be appreciated at the angle of the mouth and cheek as well because this inflammation basically causes swelling and that swelling occurs around the area of the angle of the mouth and lastly if it's an acute phase of pericoronitis mainly patient experiences fever leukocytosis because it's an infective and inflammatory process so there's increase in wbcs and malaise patient they don't feel really well and they feel very tired lethargic so these are the systematic signs which may need occur in acute pericoronitis but in chronic cases these systematic signs they don't occur that much mainly these redness swollen suppurative and pain radiating to the jaw dull pain radiating towards this region that is the feature which we can appreciate in chronic cases now before we talk about how do we actually manage patients who are suffering from pericoronitis there are some important complications which we should know that if we do not treat pericoronitis as soon as possible especially for the lower third molars so this can lead to complications such as firstly patient can experience pericoronal abscess this inflammatory process which initially starts as exudation it can wall off thereby forming an abscess which can further lead to difficulty in opening of the patient's mouth that is called as strismus and then further it causes pain and then the treatment plan changes initially if it was non surgical it may lead to surgical treatment as well now since there are different facial spaces which are present around the third molar for example some mandibular space we have retropharyngeal space submesetric spaces so basically when inflammation is present and if you do not treat it immediately it can lead to um, infection spreading into the oropharyngeal area and base of the tongue as well now since this is an inflammatory process and inflammatory process starts so there is accumulation of exudate and that exudate contains bacteria so that bacteria can travel through the lymphatic systems and it can involve lymph nodes such as the submandibular lymph node cervical lymph node and retropharyngeal lymph node so these lymph nodes can be swollen if you do not treat pericoronitis as soon as possible now other complication which are more serious are peritonsillar abscess it can lead to cellulitis as well and very rarely although there is a possibility that it can lead to ludwig's angina as well which involves some mental some mandibular and sublingual spaces all together and that is a serious complication because it hinders the respiratory system of the patient so these are the complication which you should keep in mind so that when a patient comes in your clinical practice you know that if you do not treat pericoronitis as soon as possible it can lead to these complications now let's talk about how do we actually manage patients who are suffering from pericoronitis now when we talk about management of pericoronitis it mainly depends on the severity and so by severity we mean that whether the patient have acute or chronic pericoronitis now firstly if there is an acute symptom and that is the first episode that the of pericoronitis that the patient experiences then we initially start with non surgical treatment now how do we do that as firstly we prescribe some painkillers to the patient so that they can manage their pain but before we prescribe painkillers to the patient we basically do is that for example in this diagrammatic picture you can see that this is the mandibular third molar which is impacted and over here we have the operculum now what we do is that we use a syringe which is filled with saline and then we flush out this area as you, as i have told you before that there is food debris bacteria and many things which are accumulated over it which basically leads to pericoronitis so when we what we do is that we use high pressure syringe which has saline in it and then we flush out this area so that all the bacterial debris food debris everything is cleared so that the trigger which is leading to inflammation that is stopped so that this tissue which is present over here operculum can heal and we prescribe painkillers to the patient which is very important sometimes if we see that there is some 
exudate or inflammatory tissue which is present over it. For example, even necrotic tissue is present over it. So we can use antiseptic agents to clean this area so that it gives a better environment for the tissue to heal. And an important thing is that since this is an infection and in patients who are suffering from systematic signs which includes fever, malaise and leukocytosis, for that patient you have to prescribe antibiotics so that the infection can heal because if this infection does not heal you cannot extract this third molar because if you extract it it can lead to further complications as well so you have to make sure that this area heals because if for example you will give a local anesthesia since this is an inflammatory site so the local anesthesia will not be effective because infection decreases the pH of local anesthetics so you have to make sure that the infection which is present around over here that is resolved by giving antibiotics most commonly we go for metronidazole and amoxicillin so these are the antibiotics that you give so that this region of infection is healed so after that infection has healed then you can go for extraction especially in cases of mandibular lower third molars now the second option that we have first option was going for non-surgical treatment the second option that we have is called as surgical treatment now surgical treatment also consists of two types firstly we can go for operculectomy the operculectomy simply means that you are removing the section of operculum which is present directly over the for example mandibular third molar that is actually causing perichoronitis so what you do is that for example this is a diagrammatic picture you can appreciate that this is the third molar and over the third molar we have this operculum this is the occlusal view as you can appreciate over here what we do is that we pull this operculum back and then using an scalpel to slice this area out and then this is the final picture that you can see so Operculectomy basically means simply simply excising the tissue which is directly present over the mandibular third molar. Now, this treatment is not that effective. It's just a temporary solution because this operculum grows again over the mandibular third molar like this. So, this is a temporary solution. This is not some a solution which is mainly preferred now. Now, the preferred method, surgical method is extraction of the tooth. Now, if for example, you have performed operculectomy or if this is the first episode of perichoronitis or you can say that there are chances that the tooth might erupt properly into the oral cavity you can decide to retain the tooth by performing operculectomy the peri perichoronal flap basically is removed and you apply periodontal pack so this is a judgment call or you can say clinical um, call where if you think that the tooth might erupt into oral cavity after the first episode so you can retain the tooth However, if there are multiple episodes after then, then you have to go for extraction. So now, for the extraction of tooth, you have to make sure that, for example, which stage of eruption is it? For example, if you are, if you see an OPG and an OPG that you appreciate, yes, the tooth is erupting, but you may say that tooth might get impacted or not. So at that stage, it's not a good stage to say whether you should extract the tooth before even has erupted in the oral cavity so that is something that you should keep in mind now in cases of impacted mandibular third molar it is always preferable that you should extract it but one thing that you should keep in mind is that the inferior alveolar nerve which is very close to the apices of the lower third molar so you have to make sure that the nerve is safe because the chances of regeneration are quite low so you have to make sure that the nerve is safe and lastly, we do take care of the position of the tooth. There are some positions in which the extraction is difficult and in some positions the extraction is easier. So you have to keep that in mind. So in this video, we talked about everything that you need to know to become an expert in actually from identifying up till managing the patient who are suffering from perichoronitis. Starting from what actually is perichoronitis, then we talked about the clinical features, we talked about complications and then finally we talked about how do we manage such cases so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time